I'm gonna be working on a Jog Minarelli 1E40 QMB type of two-stroke 49cc engine today. The GY650, 125, 150, even the 250s is a pretty similar process. Uh, to get started on this one, usually you've got an air box here and it bolts to these two front bolts. You'll need to remove that and get that out of your way to start with. Then after that you can move on to all the CVT cover bolts that are around the edges and usually one in the center. I've only got one in here today just to speed the video up a little bit. And a lot of times you'll have a, uh, a bracket bolted on here to the bottom in the center that holds this uh, brake cable out of the way. So get started by removing all those bolts. They're usually uh, an 8 millimeter hex or a, I believe it's 5 millimeter Allen key. Shouldn't have to mess with a Kickstarter to get this off. If you do, it would only be just maneuvering it a little bit just to uh, free it up. Once that's out, all those are out. You can just pop the cover off and be careful not to lose any of these little locator pins that fit inside a couple of holes here. They fit here and in this spot on the jog motors. Once you've got the CVT cover off, you can see the whole transmission here. If you've got the front pulley, the variator, the fan, the belt, the clutch bell and the clutch behind it, and then your rear pulley and torque driver in there. You'll want to start off by removing the variator. So you remove this nut here first. It's a 17 millimeter on this one. It can vary depending on what your scooter is. The easiest way is to use an impact like you see here. This is an air impact. You can get electric impact wrenches from uh, Harbor Freight's a really popular one. Sears Craftsman. Lots of places carry those. Uh, the only other option is you're going to need a way to, to lock the variator in place or the crankshaft in place so that you can remove that nut without the crank spinning. There are specialty tools available from places like Enviromoto.com, PartsForScooters.com and a lot of others. Uh, some of them use can lock into these teeth here and the bolt holes and hold it in place. On the GY650s they've got teeth on the starter for the starter gear here and uh, it'll lock into two bolt holes over here and hold that in place that way. GY6150 there's a couple of holes in the variator where you can put a spanner wrench in there and hold it in place. Uh, the, whatever way you can find to lock that in place but the easiest way is definitely an impact like I'm going to use. And you'll see here it's very easy to remove this with an impact. Take the nut off. Then you've got usually a washer and a uh, kickstarter pawl or gear, whatever you want to call it here. Then on these two strokes, you've got a key that locks the uh, variator fan in place onto the splines of the crankshaft and then the variator fan itself. And on some of these models you get a lot of questions about restrictions. If there's a restriction in the variator it's usually a washer that's right between this plate and the drive boss here. And what it does is more or less it holds the uh, the two halves of the pulley a little further apart so they can't close as much. The belt can't ride as high up in the front to the outside of the variator and it's harder to get the last few mile per hour out of it. So anyway once you've got that off you can pull the belt off of the shaft here, unloop it from the clutch and get that out of your way. Then you can pull the drive boss out from the variator and remove the variator, ramp plate and rollers hopefully all in one. It's a little harder with one hand so I'm just gonna do it one at a time I suppose. So that's the variator the rollers are going to try and fall out. And then the ramp plate back here. If you've got two hands you can hold the whole thing together from behind and remove it like that or sometimes it'll come out easily with one hand. So that's the front pulley. Everything else back here is your starter clutch and whatnot for the electric starting system. Then you can move on to the rear 
remove the clutch and the rear pulley. You usually have a little uh, rubber O-ring here. That should just slide off. And then this nut here should be a 24 millimeter. Again, the same kind of deal. Uh, it's a lot easier with an impact. If you don't have an impact gun, you can get a spanner and kind of lock into these holes and hold the clutch in place. And also it helps to set your rear brake if you've got a parking brake on your scooter, set that. Or have somebody hold it, sometimes that'll help you. Comes off very easy with an impact. Once that's off, your clutch bell will just slide off. And then this whole rear assembly will slide off. And that's your clutch and your torque driver, rear pulley, contra spring, everything in there. Now that we've got everything removed from the engine, uh, I'll show you a little bit about checking out some of these pieces, how to clean them or service them. Start with a belt, CVT belt, drive belt. Uh, these two strokes, they use a 788, 1728, most of them. There's some different sizes with different models here and there, but that's the most common one. Uh, I like the bando belts like you see like you see here. There's cheaper belts, but they tend to, to tear up on me. Uh, the first thing is you want to check the width of it. By the spec here, the 17, it's supposed to be roughly 17 millimeters thick, wide. Service limit, I believe, is about 15 millimeters on these. Hopefully, you'll see somewhere around 16 to 17 millimeters if you measure that. If it gets much below that, you're going to start seeing your speed decrease most of the time because the belt can't ride as high up and get you the proper uh, top speed gearing that you'd like to have. So you want to check that. Check your whatever model you have. Check the uh, manual for a service limit. Minimum thickness. Uh, next thing is just to look for general signs of wear. This one's in pretty good shape. You can see everything's intact on the edges here. I got a couple of older belts here, stuff to look for. This one you can see, hopefully you can see it's glazed, it's cracked and dry rotting. Those are bad signs, you'll want to replace the belt. Um, also, here's another one. You can see it's chewed up, it's had contact from something. If you find any contact like this on your belt, you'll want to inspect the whole CVT and figure out what exactly is hitting it to avoid uh, eating up belts in the future and having to replace them. Obviously anytime you've got chips and you can see the belts inside there, you don't you want to replace it. Um, neither of these really have it, but sometimes these little cords on the side, the bands inside there will be eaten up and frayed and stuff and you'll want to replace the belt if you see anything like that. So that should cover the belt. Moving on to the clutch and uh, clutch bell, rear pulley assembly. Start with the clutch bell. The most important thing here is this inside surface right on the edge. You want to make sure there's no uh, no slippery residue or anything like that. No films, no grease, nothing that could cause the clutch shoes to slip. A lot of times you'll end up with some buildup in here. Clean that out with a uh, brake cleaner or something. Clean the whole assembly with brake cleaner. Uh, if you have a problem with this surface, you might need to sand it down with emery cloth just to make sure it's uh, it's got a good grip. It can grip well with the clutch shoes. Then you can move on to this rear clutch pulley assembly contra spring in there. And you'll need to get that nut off in order to open this thing up and get the clutch separate and everything else apart. Okay, there's a lot of ways to do this. I posted a video in the past of how to remove this nut using a, uh, a bench top vise and like an oil filter wrench or a strap wrench. Really the easiest way is to use an impact gun just like most of the stuff. The problem with that is you usually don't have the socket that it needs. It needs this big, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but 38 millimeter socket for most of them. Uh, I think I picked this one up online for like 10 bucks or something like that. So it's really not that bad if you do it all the time. And again, an impact wrench. Uh, so of course, put your socket on there. You wanna hold your feet down, put pressure down so that when you remove this nut, the contra spring doesn't push the whole assembly up, it doesn't fly apart. So hold pressure on that with your feet, get your impact gun on there, and just take it off. Once you got that off, you're still holding pressure, and just release it. Then you can remove your clutch. 
All right, so once you remove that nut, the clutch will just pop right off of the rest of the assembly here. You just want to take a look at that, make sure it's not warped, there's no damage there on this side. Flip it over, you can see your three clutch shoes and your clutch springs. Uh, if you're having trouble, like the, uh, the transmission seems like it engages too early, then you may need to replace these springs either with stock replacements again or with aftermarket springs that'll let the clutch engage at a later RPM, a higher RPM. And also you'll want to make sure these are in place properly, nothing sticking out or anything like that. If you need to remove them, you can use uh, hose pliers. I've got a video on that. And uh, some people like to use these uh, snap ring pliers. Uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube of those as well. And you'll need to inspect the clutch shoes here, make sure they're not glazed. Make sure there's enough pad left. And uh, I usually sand these with emery paper, emery cloth. And then spray them down with brake cleaner just to make sure they get a good grip. Once you've dealt with the clutch, you're just left with the uh, contra spring and the rest of the rear pulley assembly here. The contra spring will come right off. Probably the easiest way to check these would be uh, just to measure the height of it, I would assume. I generally compare them to another one that I have around, but you may not have that option. You just want to make sure they're still springy and nothing seems damaged, bent, anything weird like that. Um, once you've got that off of there, you've got the rear pulley, torque driver. You can see it slides apart, but it doesn't move just straight up and down. It actually needs to rotate a little bit in order to, uh, to open and close. And that's because the action of the torque driver inside there. You just want to, you want to make sure that operates smoothly. It should be very smooth, no hangs or anything like that. And if you've got it this far, you might as well pull it apart and clean it and regrease it as well. So you want to start off by removing this cover here and you just take a screwdriver I'll have to put the camera down for a second but take a screwdriver and get it under that little lip and pry it up and once you get it started you can probably just pull it off the rest of the way by hand and then you've got you can see your torque driver how it works and you can see the little groove in there and you can see how you have to turn it because it's got to pass through that groove the right way and if you look right in the center it kind of has two different angles. It switches angles right there. And that's a lot of times when you feel people say the transmission shifts. That's basically what it's doing is it's changing angles in there and it takes a different amount of effort to move the pulley so it feels like the transmission shifts. Uh, a lot of times if you have a problem right around there or if your transmission just doesn't feel smooth for lack of a better description, uh, it ends up being sometimes you get this is kind of dirty or nasty inside here and it's just not working the way it should and you'll need to pull it apart and clean it. So once you've got that cover off you can see the little pegs in there, the little pins. We've got two of them on this model. They need to be removed. That's fairly simple. Basically just face them down. And I just tap them on my workbench and you can see the pin will fall out. And then you uh, flip it around to the other side and do the same thing. And of course this one's going to be stubborn, but eventually the pin should fall out of there. There it goes. Once you got both of the pins out, this will just slide right up off of there. So this is actually your torque driver. And again, you want to inspect these grooves, make sure they're not worn down in any one spot. Sometimes they'll get, a, they'll get worn right around where you cruise every now and then or something like that. If they're really worn down, it can cause it to hang, so you'll want to replace it. Uh, clean this assembly up with a uh, brake cleaner usually. Get all the old grease off there. Make sure these, if you have any problems with grease around there, you might want to check these seals out, these two little O-rings basically that fit around there. You've got a seal there as well you want to check, make sure it's in good shape. And then there's uh, half of your pulley face there. You want to make sure there's no belt debris on it or any kind of dirt, grease, anything. Uh, since these are steel, I usually go over them with about 220 grit sandpaper. Again, hit them with uh, some brake cleaner. Make sure they're completely clean, free of any residue. Same deal on this side of it. Hit that area with 220 grit brake cleaner if you need to. Uh, clean this, this shaft up. Clean all the, uh, the old grease off of there. Make sure your threads are in good condition. Also, on the back of it, if you look inside there, I'm not sure how well you can really see it on the camera, but uh, there's a needle bearing in there. 
you want to clean that out put a new coat of grease on that I'm just using wheel bearing grease for all this stuff uh, thin coat of grease on that then when you're reassembling it you'll put a thin coat of grease on here I'm not gonna do it for the video because uh, my hands are dirty enough handling the camera as it is but you'll put a thin coat of grease on here then you uh, take your torque driver slide that over I should say you'll uh, you'll notice you've got two different types of holes in here you've got these holes with a little ring around them and then just a hole the pins are going to go, the guides are going to go into these uh, the holes with a ring around them. So, just slide this over and uh, line it up with the proper holes. Once you get it lined up, take your little pins here and just pop them in there. And uh, do that for both sides. So once you've got those in, again, make sure everything's working smoothly. I usually just take grease and kind of fill these grooves up in here with grease and smear just a thin coat around there. Then you've got your cover again, make sure that's clean. Slide that back over, make sure it seats all the way down. Once that's seated all the way down, you can put your contra spring on there. Put your clutch on top when you're lining that up. You can see your clutch is not a complete circle. It's got these two flat spots. Same deal for where it goes. Obviously you line that up the right way. Okay, so you've got, you've got that all lined up. When you put it on there, press it down. Easiest way again for me, sit in a chair, put both feet on it, hold pressure on it, and then start the nut. You gotta be real careful with these. For some reason, they'll start crooked fairly easily. So make sure you've got it started straight. Get that screwed down what you can by hand, still holding pressure on it, keep pressure on it. Again, like I said before, the easiest way to deal with this is the impact, big 38 millimeter socket. Just tighten that down, you can remove pressure. And there's your pulley, your rear pulley assembly back together. Now we can move on to checking out the variator and hardware for it. Start out by taking a look at the nut that holds the variator in place. Most importantly you want to check the threads just make sure none of those are stripped or anything like that and of course you want to check the threads on the crankshaft as well. And then the washer and the uh, kickstarter gear here you want to make sure these are in good shape sometimes these will get worn down in your kickstarter start slipping things like that. Um, this key here that fits into the variator fan, fixed half. Sometimes these will break or the teeth will get stripped out and things like that. So just make sure that's in good condition. And on the same, at the same time, check the splines on the variator. Make sure they're in good shape. Sometimes if they get buggered up, you'll have to uh, run a little file through there and just clean them up. You don't want to really file them down, but just clean them up so that things will slide smoothly over there. And then with the fan, you want to make sure not this hole here isn't oddly shaped or you know nothing's wrong with that. The blades on it, the little fan blades here, uh, hopefully none of those are chipped off. If you've got one or two chipped off, it's not really a big deal. Could throw it out of balance. It helps to cool the transmission down, so it's not a, it's not a bad idea to replace it either, even if it's only a couple of them. And then on the inside, you want to make sure you don't have any markings from the belt or any kind of residue film, anything that might make a belt slip. I usually uh, sand these with about 400 grit sandpaper just to make sure the surface is clean. Drive boss, a little piece that goes over the crankshaft and in the middle of the variator in between there. A lot of times these will get dirty, get some kind of film or rust or whatever on them. The best bet for these I like to polish them, use a metal polish or a uh, actual buffer wheel, polish them up so everything will move smoothly. You want the variator to be able to travel smoothly across it. Uh, onto the variator assembly itself here. Flip it over face down. With the face of it, you'll treat it just like, you, just like I said for the fan. Sand that down with maybe 400 grit or something like that. Make sure there's no, uh, 
no evidence of anything weird going on there like belt residue left on it stuff like that once you flip it over you've got the ramp blade here you can just pull that out it's got these little uh, plastic slides here make sure none of those are cracked they're all in place again check the uh, splines here make sure those are in good condition nothing's really worn it's normal to see some wear where the rollers move around inside there then you got the variator itself and the roller weights you can dump those out when you're looking at the roller weights you just want to inspect them make sure there's no flat spots nothing like that doesn't look like they're starting to melt or anything weird no damage um, flat spots are just what they sound like instead of being completely round you'll actually have a flat spot in them comes from heat and stuff like that uh, when you're looking at the inside of the variator with this little bushing here the brass bushing again you want to try and smooth that out polish it if possible so it can move smoothly on the drive boss and uh, make sure there's no damage anywhere in here to the ramps the ramps for the roller weights or whatever and some people like to polish those up some people like to treat that with graphite when it goes back together it's pretty simple again to assemble it you'll just put your roller weights in the grooves like this way if you're uh, if you happen to be mixing roller weights for some reason to get a different weight then what you'll do is you'll stagger them so you put one every other one one every other track like so so like say this is a five gram for instance you have five gram here and if you wanted to use the others being six gram you put them every other one but you want to make sure they're staggered if you do something like that because uh, otherwise it'll throw the whole thing out of balance you don't want that once you get those all in place again make sure you've got your guides on the uh, ramp plate of the variator here flip it over the right way and then it'll slide over all three of these little guides and that's all it is to putting it back together okay so now you've gone over everything and you've got this pile of parts that you need to get back onto your CVT I start out with a rear pulley assembly here and clutch assembly and just slide this onto the shaft so that should just slide on here, spin freely. Then you can take your clutch bell. It's got splines inside there. You can see that match up with the splines on that shaft. Get those lined up and slide it into place. And then you'll need to install the nut again for the clutch bell. I like to use a torque stick on my, uh, my impact gun to limit the amount of force that it can put onto this nut. And the same for the variator. To avoid stripping the threads or causing any damage there or tightening something. Uh, this one is a 30 foot pound. That's what I use all the time. Seems to work pretty well for me. Again, if you set your brake, it'll help you out to get that on there. Uh, if you're not using an impact gun, look up the specs in a manual for your model and torque it to whatever spec that is while the clutch bell is being held uh, then you'll want to get the the variator on here I've already showed you how to put that together and inspect it so you'll just slide that this ramp blade has uh, splines in the back you'll line that up with the splines and then just slide that over then you'll take your drive boss slide that over as well goes through the center of the center of the variator next you'll need to get your belt on there and you'll start out by putting it on the rear pulley and usually you'll see it can't quite reach over the front pulley from there so what you'll do is use both hands and open up this rear pulley so that the belt can fit inside there and then that'll give you enough slack that it'll easily fit over the front pulley once you've got that on you'll need to put your variator fan in place I find it easier to actually take this uh, washer here put it in place on the fan it's got again splines that line up with the splines on here line both of those up at the same time once you do that You'll probably need to make sure you still got some slack on this belt 
and then you'll put your kickstarter gear here and the washer that goes inside of it you'll slide both of those on and then you can install the nut again that should be a 17 millimeter on this model could vary on what you have and you'll want to make sure you're holding the belt you've got slack in the back here you got slack in the belt so that the belt is not preventing the uh, the drive face from seating on the the drive boss there and once you get it tightened down by hand same deal as the clutch I'm using the same 30 foot pound torque stick on mine or again lock it in place whatever you have to do for whatever method you're using make sure you're holding this belt so it's not tightening against that and torque that down and the last thing is this little o-ring make sure you slip that back over the shaft there then uh, you don't really have to but I like to spin the, uh, the variator and get the belt to seat the way it should so it's not in the way this is easier on mine. I've got the spark plug out so it'll turn over freely, but you can do it with a spark plug in still. Or you can wait and when you start up the engine it'll do the same thing on its own. So that's the transmission back together. Now all that's left is you need to get your CVT cover back on and any accessories left with it. So let me get that done. Again, you should have these little, uh, little dowel pins in here, the little guides and they'll line up in certain holes in the block there in the case and also on this one you've got a bearing under the CVT cover you want to make sure that's in good condition and spins freely that lines up with the end of this shaft here and helps to support the uh, the rear pulley assembly because I don't know if you can really tell it on the video but there's usually wobble in the rear clutch there unless it's supported by that bearing and the wobble is actually normal for this kind of motor so don't be alarmed by that as long as it's not excessive but that's why and one of the reasons you need to have your CVT cover in place on these to support that bearing so line everything up there you may need to wiggle your kickstart or whatever just to make sure it's positioned properly I always start with the uh, the center bolt on the CVT it just seems to be the easiest one for me get that started Again, I'm only using one bolt in this, but you'll have a bunch of bolts all around the edges. Tighten all those down. Once you've got all your bolts installed, again, remember the uh, you might have a bracket down here to hold this cable in place. Another thing to mention with that is when you put the CVT cover in, if you have the bracket for that, make sure that it doesn't get wedged between the CVT cover and the uh, engine case. That happens a lot. And then you'll have to pull the bolts back out to get it right later and once that's all secure the last thing on this one you've got your air box that you need to reinstall and again that just this part pops over the uh, the carburetor put that clamp in place and then you've got your two bolts that'll line up with those two holes there and once that's all finished that's your CVT's back together and you should be ready to ride of course whenever you ride after something like this you'll want to listen for anything suspicious any signs that you might have put something back together wrong or there's contact somewhere or whatever if you hear or feel anything out of the ordinary then you might want to pop it back pop the cover back off and inspect it just make sure everything's pro is, is done right under there and uh that should be about it